Okay, I think we're back. So I'm gonna let coach uh, talk quickly about how we handled last night or transition and then we'll get to your questions. Jeez. Lose a game, nobody gets on anymore. What the heck? Bunch of fair weather reporters, what the hell? God dang, go from 64 to 13, 12. I can see who's uh, who, who's diehard, who the fair weather ones are. That's for dang sure. Um, yeah, just uh, just just a night that was uh, twelve of thirty from the layup department. Miss uh, a whole boatload of free throws. Shoot fifty percent at the line, and uh, you know then have some very very key mental breakdowns uh, in transition where they made threes. Or, or in the half court, um, and you start just taking those away, and and uh, all of a sudden it's it's a completely different ball game in which we uh, we didn't play very well, uh, but uh, again uh, things happen and and you you, you move on and and uh, now we've got uh, got a Nebraska team that uh, you know lost a very close game last night and and uh, is playing exceptionally well and. You know, Teddy Allen went for a went for 41 and made it look easy. Uh, so we've got uh, we've got our hands full. That's for sure. Brad, I'll start. Do you remember a point or a time where it kind of clicked for Trent specifically to go from the score on your first team to making that defensive switch to what he is now? Well, I, you know, and I think that uh, um, he. As I'm all about winning, he's always been about that, you know. And if he needed to score, he scored. If he, he he's he's taken great pride in uh, becoming um, the best defender in the league, and he's become become that guy for us. You know, he's taken a lot of pride in and a lot of of of. of uh, challenge and taking the other guys, the other team's best guy and stopping him. And, and, you know, it's utilizing his athletic ability. I say this all the time, pound for pound, he's probably the best athlete on our campus and uh, taking that and maximizing it. It just wasn't at the offensive end, which he, you know, he did all through high school and, 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 but it's maximizing at the defensive end too. And he's seen the impact. Uh, I don't know if there's a specific time, but um uh, uh, you know, he's, he's never takes a playoff. He never takes practice off. Uh, you know, you, you look back and you look at the, that young man's maturation and it's pretty remarkable. What will you remember most about Trent DeMonte and Zach and, and kind of getting that buy-in at the start and, and your vision and running with it? Well, I, first of all, I mean, you're looking for guys when you take over, you're looking for guys that are about what you're about you know, as, as a coach. And, you know, it wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't that we had already had things established. These guys established that they're, they're as responsible for, for what our culture is and, um, and, and what it's going to become. And those guys will live longer than they're in the Jersey. Uh, I mean, they're, they're the guys that, that said it. And, you know, there were, there was, there was a lot of movement. There was a lot of people that, that, that had to come and go. But those guys stayed, and 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 those are the guys that were uh, huge factors in, in in us being a situation we're in now. Thanks, Coach. I'm curious about Nebraska. Um, you know, it seems like a different team of late. You know, it seems like you maybe woke them up that Friday night. They they beat Penn State. They almost beat them again last night. They played Maryland tough. Uh, what what do you think has been their improvement the last five six games? Well, they one they've been healthy. You know, they were playing very well right before COVID, and um, uh, and they had just gotten Derek Walker eligible and uh, off his. You know, I think he had a suspension of a semester or something from I don't know what, but um, and and he had just gotten eligible, and uh, he's added a nice piece to them because of his size. He's a terrific interior defender. And uh, I think he played one, maybe two games, and then they get shut down with COVID. So they're just getting their feet underneath them, really. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, 
they're long, they're athletic. And then, you know, uh, as, as, as the seasons progressed, uh, you know, Teddy Allen's played great and uh, he's continued to improve. So this is a, this is a team that just keeps getting better. I also have a question about the Monte. I remember back your, your first season, even the, the exhibition game against Eastern Illinois, you pointed out the Monte and talked about why you wanted to start him and, you know, that, that you saw things in him that we were all going to see over the next four years. Um, what's it been like for you to see that maturation from him? Yeah, it's awesome. You know, and, and I mean, here comes a kid that, uh, you know, I, and I, I mean this in a really good way. I mean, he was fat, you know, coming off a, coming off a knee surgery and, and, and a knee rehabilitation and, you know, the before and after pictures after just a year with him, uh, were, were remarkable. You know, here's a, here's a guy that, uh, uh, you know, has grown off the court as much as on the court. Here's a guy that, uh, you know, was, a almost, a uh, or was a unanimous selection to be one of our team captains. Um, you know, and, and that's, that's the ultimate respect when your teammates vote you that and your, and your coaches and, uh, you know, great personality. He's got a dynamic personality. Uh, people are drawn to him and, and, uh, it's been, it's been a, it's been an honor to coach he and Trent and, and, and Zach. And, uh, that's the, um, uh, that's the ultimate respect. Demonte got it from his teammates. Thanks. Brad, a, a lot of folks will, at the end of the season, you know, look back, how far did that team go? And, and that's obviously a, a measuring stick of a season, but is there something else to you that makes a season special and how you look back on this? I know we're not even close to the end of it, but you're in the midst of something that Illinois hasn't had in a long time in, in this kind of season. You know, I, I, am sure there'll be a time for that, Scott. I, you know, I don't, um, you know, it blew me away the other day when Derek told me that, you know, it was only the fourth time in February, fourth, fourth time in 65 years that, an Illinois team has been ranked in the top five in February. And, and I, that shocked me because I think this program is elite. And I, that, that shocked me to, to know that I, I don't, I don't look at it that way. I, I, I look at it so very narrow minded right now. It's, it's just the next game. And, and I, I imagine we'll, we'll look back. I'm, I'm really proud of where this group of seniors has gotten us. I'm really proud of the, the, the maturation in four years. Uh, you know, and that's solely responsible to Trent and, and, and Zima and, and, and DeMonte and, and, you know, Tyler's back for his 12th year or whatever it is. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's one of those deals that you're, you're really proud of those kids because they're reflective of what you've been teaching and, and you've been, and, and for the most part preaching. So it's, it's all, um. You know, there's time to reflect. Now's not it. Fair enough. I, re I recognize we're in the midst of, you know, one after the other games here. And, and, and then, but February and, and the team playing well, team maybe peaking. Um, some have commented that, you know, that's a hallmark of your teams, that you're playing the best in, in February and into March. Do you feel that way as you look back on your teams? And, or is that a product of, yeah, everybody gets better as they go along? Not everybody gets better now. There, you you see tailspins every year. So I I mean it's one thing that uh, you know I think we we try to figure things out early, you know, and it's it's there you you might get beat, you might lose a game or two or or whatever, but uh, you've got to grow. And you know I look back at the Baylor game and 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 see how far we've come, and it's like whoa, you know we're a completely different uh, completely different animal now. Uh, but it, it's it's um, it's what we strive to do is to be playing our best and and to be our best as we uh, as we head towards uh, the tail end of the season. It's my goal is to be as as healthy and as uh, as COVID free in this season as we can be uh, going into postseason and and uh, capable to try to make a run. Thanks. Hey, Brad, Zach mentioned a practice last year where he was on the scout team uh, before Wisconsin. He was playing as Nate Reavers, and he said he couldn't miss a shot. Do you, remember, do you remember that practice or 
and yeah. then it were, what, what was that like? There's what, nothing, there's nothing like being somebody else in practice and the coach tells you to shoot every shot when you're open. And it's just like you ought you just free up and, and you get going and, you know, mm-hmm. Zach's a heck of a shooter. And, and I mean, when he gets it going, he's a hard, hard guard. And, uh, you know, he was, he was, he was jump hooking it that day. He was shooting threes. Um, and, and that, of course that just got me, you know, all revved up and on the, on the first group and, uh, you know, and then that got him going even more and talking and Tyler and Zima talk more trash uh in and on the scout team than anybody else so those guys get going and they love to heckle the the first group so yeah i remember that a lot he's he's uh zach's a good player and then what was kind of the process like of offering him a scholarship and how happy are you that you eventually did that or not well, a spot on the, t- the team yeah okay. i mean the one thing that that you 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 want passion you want guys that that want to be a part of it and uh, man, when they fit your culture, I mean, you're talking about you're talking about a guy that almost every day when you, when you when I get up in the morning and I go have a, a cup of coffee or I walk down in the lobby of a hotel, Zach's down there reading, or he's studying. Uh, we walk in for testing every morning, and he's he's got a book open and he's studying. I mean, that guy's about everything that we want to be about, and and. You know, he's a he's a straight A student. He's a he's a guy that uh, uh, takes his his time in the weight room extremely serious. And and he's a he's a health nut. He's he's vocal. Everybody likes him. Uh, and it's just a it's a it's a it's a match made in heaven. I mean, for us and for him, I hope. And, uh, you know, he'll always be part of the Illini family and a big part of it. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Brad, um, you know, through, throughout uh, DeMonte's career, he's uh, always talked about as a guy who's really funny and, and charismatic. Um, he doesn't always show that as much uh, with the media and stuff. So I was just wondering what he didn't like you guys. He didn't like you guys very much. That's why. You yeah, know. I understand why I, I wouldn't like us very much either. Um, <laughs> but we appreciate you talking to us. Um, what do we what do we not see? What what does Demonte do to to get people to say things like that um, about him? You know, I I just I think he's just he's guarded until you really get to know him and you get to you get to see that and 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 he is he's got quick wit, uh, he, he's he's very very funny, you know he's got a um, a quiet soft humor that um you know he, he's he's you know, he just doesn't let everybody in and and it and it takes a little while you got to prod him with it sometimes and and uh and yet um you know i still go back to the first practice um you know i told him he could pack all of his stuff and head head his head back to peoria uh you know as he was laying on the floor because he was so desperately out of shape you know, and he was puking in a trash can and we still laugh about that now. And, you know, we, we, we talk about the, um, you know, the, his days at manual all the time and we, we, we kid and have fun and, you know, you've got to, you've got to get to know him. You got to get to know what he's about. And, and, uh, and, and then he's, you see all that, that, that charm and that charisma. Absolutely. Um, as a guy who, uh, you know, is very knowledgeable with Illinois history as a program, um, you know, DeMonte seems to, he kind of revived the, the Peoria pipeline, so to speak, of players coming in and really featuring and being a big part of Illinois teams. Um, and now it kind of continues in a way with Adam Miller. Um, what do you think that means? Does that mean something um, for this program with the history it has there? Well, I think, you know, Peoria is, you know, when Peoria's got very good players, I mean, there has been a natural pipeline to Illinois. We want that to continue. I think that, uh, you know, DeMonte was the next in line uh, in terms of his talent, in terms of his uh, um, ability to play in the Big Ten. Uh, and obviously, you know, we, we want to keep the best players in state. And DeMonte was that, you know, had a great chance to be Mr. Basketball had he had he not ACL'd. But uh, again, it's... Um, 
Uh, it's just a great tradition that we've, we've seen here at the University of Illinois come from Peoria and, and have success in this program. And uh, uh, we hope that continues. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Brad. Um, with uh, maybe this idea of no hesitation, Trent, were there any conversations uh, in the last month where, you know, with him, it's like, keep playing defense like you do, but it's, it's okay to tap back into the, that offensive skill set? Yeah, I mean, I we, we've not had any conversations. We just scream at him every time he turns out a shot. I mean, I mean, it's literally, you know, it's it's one of those that that um, the 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 fine line. Trent well, Trent walks the fine line between wanting to be an unbelievable teammate, knowing that he can drive it, knowing that he can be a setup guy, and yet um, knowing that he's one of the most capable scorers in this league, and. You know, he, he, he fights that within himself sometimes. I, as a coach, want him to shoot the dog on ball every single time he's open because we, we've all seen those those heaters and those burners that he can get on. And and, and yet he's um, made such a great teammate. And, and I respect the heck out of that. Thank you. Hey, Coach, thanks for doing this, especially on short notice. You know, I think because about I love you guys so much. We love you too, coach. Thank you for being so good with us. When you think back on the struggles that this senior class had when they were freshmen and sophomores and even some of the growing pains they asked maybe went through last year, do you think that makes the success that they've had along with you that much more appreciative of it this season? I hope so. Cause that's life. You know, there's, there's not, there's not, nothing comes easy. I mean, we all know that as adults and, and, um, you know, having, got, having gone through it, I mean, your, your journey is, is, is filled with struggles and, and uh, very seldom, you know, I, I hope they can take life's lessons from what they learned the, the, the first two years and, and understand that they're better people than they are uh, because they went through those, because they went through those struggles, because they had a coach who, who demanded more from them because they had a coach who expected more from them uh, because they had a coach who, 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 who wanted them to become great. And even when it wasn't easy and demanded that they become great and, and not settle for anything less. And I hope those are all things that as they get down the road of life, they look back on and say, Oh God, he was, he was demanding, but man, did it help me because now I can handle this situation. And, and, and now that we're winning games, obviously you want them to understand that um, great things can happen, but, but obviously they may, not, they may not happen when you want them to happen. And that's, that's, um, that's the way this thing works sometimes. And uh, man, I couldn't be prouder of this group of guys. And then a follow-up, I don't know if you have an answer to this, but I think it's pretty clear that Iowa probably plans to forego his senior season. Are there any plans or anything in the work to maybe celebrate him tomorrow with the being senior night and potentially his last game in Champaign? Well, I, you know, I think those are all things that, that, um, and, and, I, and I'll say this on, on, on Io's behalf. And then I'll be honest, I haven't had a conversation with him about it. I don't need to go to the draft. I don't need to go. There's nothing else he's going to accomplish in college basketball that, that, that I'm going to do for him. Uh, I mean, he's, he's turned himself into, in, into that guy. So, um, you know, it's, it's uh, those decisions obviously become their family, but uh, you know, Io's had an unbelievable year. He's a national player of the year, in my opinion. And um, you know, it's, it's one of those deals that he's, he's um, you know, he'll make the decision that's based, based on him, but my, in my, in my opinion, he needs to go. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Hey, Brad, the way Trent and DeMonte, they kind of play off of each other in terms of their humor. I mean, they, they had each other giggling and, and kind of cracking up here. What What's the trickle-down effect when you have your two senior leaders who play off of each other like that so well? And it seems like they have an ability to, to lighten the mood when it needs lightened or, or kind of keep things going that way. Well, that's the best part of this team, Joey. Is I, I mean, we're we're 
the, this team smiles. This team has fun. This team and this team knows how to how to how to enjoy themselves and 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 they they grow up and uh you know if if when when you've been through the battles like those guys are, you learn to laugh certain things off and you learn to you learn to understand how uh how things get handled and and you know okay you know coach said this or that or this happens and 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 that that's man that's beautiful that's fun that's that's true that's a true friendship that's family that's that's everything that we strive for is to be able to create laughter and 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 yet um you know it's almost a that that brotherhood that you see you know two brothers that fight two brothers that laugh two brothers that wrestle uh, together whatever it is and and that's that's what that is thanks Brad. appreciate it Last one is uh, Tyler coming back for a 13th season. <clears throat> uh, his mother would love for him to. His father thinks that he needs to go draw a damn paycheck and get the hell off my payroll. Um, but uh, uh, no, he's finishing up his second master's degree in the school of business. And uh, uh, as uh, I think it'll probably be time for Tyler to go start his uh future endeavors as a uh as a in the in the world of basketball i think that's what he's heading into at this point in his, his life but uh uh again a lot of a lot of a lot of true blessings there uh to be able to have him around for uh as long as i've been able to have him around in coaching thanks brad okay it's four o'clock so we have to wrap up just a quick note for the media um the senior ceremony will be we'll stream that 